It's Real Fit Radio with B and J dot L O U. If this is your first time listening, welcome. And if you're a returning listener, welcome back. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Weak is he who permits his thoughts to control his actions. Og Mandino. Is that from the greatest salesman? Mm hmm. Yeah. Care to elaborate on that? When you let your thoughts control your action, like if you're angry on the inside, you move based off how you feel as opposed to sitting and analyzing something before you actually do it. You act on your emotions. Mm. Every now and then I do it, but more times than not, I'm pretty emotionless. I don't allow my emotions to dictate my actions. Mm. Usually it's with you Mm. when I overreact. Okay. Well, that's our food for thought before we get into... The main course. That was the appetizer. I shouldn't say food for thought. That was the appetizer before we get into the main course of why we're here. <laughs> but well, I don't even do check-ins. I'm doing good. You're doing good. The check-in for us should be that we're here and we're doing the podcast. So. Absolutely. I think I used to, <laughs> I forget who said it, but it was like, hey, how you doing? It's good. Or I can't complain. And it's like, shoot, nobody want to hear that anyway, or nobody's listening or nobody wants to listen. I can't remember how it went, but I was like, that's so messed up. <laughs> Oh yeah. It was just a messed up kind of flow. Like you're gonna say you can't complain, and the other person says, uh, "Yeah, don't nobody want to hear." It. Like, please don't, because I don't want to hear it. Hmm. Anywho, <laughs> yeah, we're here. Just keep your thoughts to yourself. Exactly. But we're here, and uh, we we're well. And even if it were a million things going on, and it always is, it's life. We're gonna get this done. So, what I've been thinking about in the last state of mind. No, I was joking. The book mm. is sitting right there. <laughs> no, no, that's a book that Lou is reading right now. Jay Z. Yep, I came from a street corner to a corner office. Okay, yeah, but that's not no, nah, no. Nah, an author went out and interviewed a couple of people who were close to him or did business dealings with him, and he got a good amount of information and was able to write a book about it. Okay, based off his viewpoints. Well, interestingly, what you just mentioned or referenced the book kind of ties into what we're talking about today. The thought came from a book. So you were right on the money and didn't even know it. Hmm. So the book, The Weight by Devon Franklin. The kids have read it. I've read other Devon Franklin books, but that one specifically, I don't want to say it didn't or it doesn't apply to me because I always like to just learn new information or just a different point of view. And that book pretty much is talking about practicing the wait, which is waiting to have sex until you're married. And he talks about he and his wife's journey through their courtship and I guess getting engaged and married, how they did not have premarital sex. So... I was thinking about that book. In addition to that, I was thinking about the kids are dating now, 19 and 20. They're out meeting people. And then I even thought about when we dated and when I was their age dating. And I was just like, the sex weight. Is it a realistic thing? And I say that to say, once you've done it, there are all these other things that can come into play. Emotionally, there could be uh, not a deep enough connection to where you guys even stay in contact and relationship. But I often wonder whether you waited or you didn't, did it make a difference? And I know now just from experience that you want to lay a solid foundation for people that you want in your life. And you definitely want to have a strong relationship that's not based on just sex or getting to having sex. But if it's on the table, off the table, I just feel like why is it so much weight put on it, the power of it and how it can devalue not just the relationship, but the individual themselves. And even through like different things, because after the kids read the book and we talked about different things and they were giving me their thoughts on it. And um, they referenced how Devon was alluding to taking sex off the table can enhance so many other things. And I agree with that but whether you do it or you don't I definitely think having sex there should be an I don't want to say an age limit on it but that's the only thing I can think of right now it's almost like you have to be 21 to go and actually purchase alcohol Mm. I think you need to be equipped with some other things mentally spiritually like a whole bunch of other stuff needs to be going on before you start just engaging 
and sex with people because there are a lot of other things that come into play once that takes place. However, there are grown people that have sex and there are still some issues. People are discarded, hurt, miscommunication, all that stuff. But that stuff can still happen even after sex. Yes, it can. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like giving you my thoughts on all this stuff. So I'm not just throwing a topic out there, but that's what I wanted to throw out there for us to go. Not so much back and forth on, but just to share your thoughts on no, it. Like, we can go back and forth. I ain't gonna lie to you. I didn't even know nothing about no waiting for no sex. I just grew up like anybody else in the late 90s, early 2000s and participated in the act throughout college. And I never even thought once to really wait for the moment or look at it like somebody is being devalued. Not to say that I disrespected the the act itself. I just liked the girl and she liked me and we was physically attracted to one another. But I will say the way I looked at it was I wasn't having sex with any anybody that I would be ashamed of having a kid with in a sense Mm -hmm. and that's being shallow because first of all I technically didn't know anything about the young women I just knew like the surface level stuff it was just in terms of the physical attraction because I knew oh okay well if I had a kid with them well at least I have a chance of not having a kid that's like oh wait like I said that's being shallow but I am being honest but as I got older I did realize what sex meant in a different realm and the realm I'm talking about is spiritual because there is a connection with that and I don't think that that connection is being taught as much as it should be or maybe it's not being taught because the people who are having sex they don't really understand it and nobody's telling them so there are some emotional ties to it you figure it out as you get older you start to realize like what am i feeling or whatnot because especially if you have a relationship with god which i do that started to take a toll on me because even if i wasn't interested in a female who i was dealing with i felt some type of way about what i did in terms of having sex with them because it's like I knew that I didn't want to be with him at some point because beyond having sex with him, we didn't have anything in common. And it was just like, OK, well, what are we here for now? You don't like anything I like. I don't like anything you like. We thought we liked each other, but really what it was was a phase of infatuation physically. So now you just put a little bit more mileage on yourself. And so did I. And for what? We really didn't have anything more in depth to keep us attached. So now you're just running around with, as they like to say now, another body on them. And that's really what's been happening in this day and age at a rapid pace where these young women and dudes, they just engage in sexual activity and they just have no idea. They're breaking one another each time they do it because they really don't understand not only just the emotional tie to it, but the spiritual tie that comes with it. It's interesting that you said that would you be with the girls and of course there was physical attraction and in your mind it's like, well, they're not bad looking. If something happens, if we have a kid, at least our kid will not be unattractive or just based on what Very you're thinking. shallow thinking. I got you. But what I'm thinking too is when I've heard males say they'll wait for it just to get it. Lyrics and songs have alluded to I hit it one time to know what it feels like. I guess in my mind, I ultimately feel like if you there, you there. The sex is just an additional part of it but when i like you or it grows to love you it doesn't matter and i think even when i was younger i don't know if that's how a lot of girls are but i find in my time i think there were more girls looking for love and people say oh it's a father figure it's this but they were wanting to have that connection with someone and a part of having that connection was coming together and sharing a level of intimacy and then it was like i've given everything i possibly can to you and either I made you wait or I didn't make you wait but if he's gonna go he's gonna go that's how I've always felt about it like the person's either gonna be there or they're not sex is extra it's like do you want guacamole with your nachos you know what I mean and I've always felt that way and I don't know how that even ties into the spiritual part of it because I think that even on a spiritual level you can have an understanding of I know that this is a huge thing if I engage in this level of intimacy with this person then I don't even know if I want to be with her or if I'm going to be married to her you know there's all these things but is it more so like to teach a person look you don't have sex 
you wait unless you know that's the one so you just hold that back you just keep putting layers of things on the table like I meet you we date we hang out some months go by and it's like I can't have sex with you because we're not married and I don't know if that's what's on the table and all that and either you gonna stay or you gonna go or maybe you'll stick around because you're like well I agree with that and I'm gonna stay around too because I think you're worth that and at some point I guess we become engaged and we get married and then we have sex and then there's all the other stuff that is on the table I just think there's so many bigger things on the table than sex I think that's why I was like the sex weight is so overrated to me it's just overrated it's like the act it only lasts for so long everything else your loyalty the trust communication commitment responsibility and weight of what we got going on our our purpose our goals are it's just so many other like big things on the table sex is a part of it but it's a side it's like salsa avocado (laughs) avocado sauce it's just not what I feel like it's cracked up to be and when I say that I don't mean the act itself because I believe and that could be a whole nother topic when you have all the other stuff when you're like in tune with who you with you guys go through the emotion whether it's the ups and downs of you don't see eye to eye but you work through it and then there's amazing moments where you've accomplished things together and you know each other sex is ridiculous because I've experienced that I've had sex and then I've had like a level of intimacy where you are connected in such a way where it's just like I couldn't see this any other way because I could lay up with you it's just good we can explore each other and I'm not trying to get all into all that but it's mental spiritual it's all this stuff but it only can be that way because of all the other things on the table but if you take all that away it's just sex it's just with or without sour cream yeah you know what i mean that's how i look at it but i think specifically females think committing to that act and not act (laughs) (laughs) committing to that act and not waiting it out to see if this is somebody they willing to do that with down the line or you know first of all have a relationship with them and then go to the next step which is I suppose sex. They feel like for whatever reason the the guy's gonna leave. Well, shit. If they leave, let them leave. Cause that just lets you know, you know, that was all they was there for to begin with. And I understand that y'all got hormones too. You got running hormones, so I get it. You fighting yours, but what is more important? You letting your hormones go, and it's like, oh well, I know or I have a feeling if I don't give in to this sex capade, I might not be able to keep them because. I know that's something big for him, but shit, like you said, if it's more to it than that, that ain't going to really matter because that's really a small fraction of what the whole pie is anyways. I mean, you done seen it in different ways. I mean, you done seen it in movies. You probably done heard stories about it with your girlfriends or even your, your, your homeboys or whatnot. I know I have dudes waited it out and they even made a fake relationship with them, got with them, you know, exclusively just so they can do that act. Cause some girls will be like, oh, well, I'm not doing nothing with you unless you my man. So they get with them and then play this game of, I like to call a house, but not being in a house. And then they'll come back to me and be like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna stick this relationship out. And it ain't even been that long. It's like, what you mean? You just, you y'all just got together like two months ago. It's like, man, We ain't really got nothing to come. And so whether the sex was good or not, it still wasn't enough to hold that dude there. And and then vice versa. There's been times where it's flipped on the other side. Women probably did that and guys didn't withhold what they have because a lot of times we look at it from one side of the spectrum. We look at it as if the woman is always the one that should withdraw. No, dudes, you can withdraw too and kind of, you know, feel the woman out, see what kind of vibe y'all have for us in common, spirituality, whatever the case may be. Because one thing I've learned dealing with with you i mean dealing with you i mean talking and stuff is you told me about the term soul ties and giving yourself to people who may or may not be in the same energy bracket as you and should you be walking around here and don't even know why you mad it's because you didn't gave your energy to somebody that they transfer yeah, energy and, yeah and you're transferring it so i know it sounds simple but it's a lot of detail or i should say intricate pieces to that act and i just think it's undermined not because some of it is because you're just being ignorant and you want to be ignorant to it because you just want to do what the hell you want to do but the other part is i understand the ignorance to it because you don't understand it so 
it's good because we've actually, and you may know this, we've taken different sides on this because I'm saying it's overrated. It's like sauce or do you want sour cream? And you're saying, dudes, you take your time because it's a lot that can happen after the fact. And some girls are going in saying, if I hold the weight of this, then maybe he'll stay. Another thing I want to throw in there, especially now with the lyrics to songs, it's almost like sex is a power. I let you hit, you buy me a bag. It's an exchange that's happening. You pay my bills, take care of my college tuition. All this stuff is alluding to, it's like, you can get this, but you know what you need to do. And that's why for me, I go back to, I'm like, it's so overrated. I understand the power that can come with it if someone allows themselves to be under that power and that's just low-key prostitution is it, what y'all well not low-key it, it, it like. is prostitution it's across the board high key right blatantly it's prostitution but also it's just like and, and i've heard before just in conversations with other males where it's just like man that sex i have you doing some crazy stuff man you you don't even understand and it's just like at some point i just want to take all the power from it it's just like after you get it then what it's not all that it's cracked up to be i laugh at boomerang remember when he rolled out the bed Mm. After he after he slept with her, mm -hmm. he like slid out and like moved her arm. That's crazy. So let me get this straight. You going to jump through all the hoops over the water, roll over, fetch, whatever you got to do. You get it. And then you don't even want to be in the bed with her anymore. It's like, oh, you ever seen like, dang, I wish she stopped calling me. I wish I'd never let her hit. Like, I never. That's what I'm I wish, talking about. It's just that like, personality shit. How does, how does that in one case is so significant on the spiritual level of you coming together and sharing this act and that's if you have all the other layers it can be very beautiful amazing oh this is incredible the power's there but i feel like all that power stripped away because i really know i don't like you i know i just want to do that with you and at this point it could be anybody that's just attractive anybody that has the type of physical attributes whatever a man or woman's attraction is whether it's short tall ethnicity muscular slim thick chiseled face dark hair light hair long hair short hair you're just like looking for a mold to interact with at that point because you really don't want nothing else at that point it should just be prostitution this will sound crazy but at that point it is an exchange you're looking for a shell that excites you in a certain way because you don't really want to get to know a person build lay any layers of anything have any type of connection i really just want to have sex with you and i want to leave and if i want to come back and have sex with you again because you fit the mold then i can do that and i know from a male perspective we would tend to do that to keep from fucking up the image imagery that we have in our head and i mean that to say the stew head girls uh-huh when they're stew heads it's almost like how you guys on the flip side how females say he can get this as long as he don't say nothing stupid right we do that the opposite way where it's like we gonna get this but we really don't want to be around you that much because it's like if i get to learn too much about what you don't have mentally that's why i just want to leave anyways on top of me just wanting to get what i get and then flip side the girls is like well if i get this to them i'll be able to drive in this type of car i'll be able to get the bags or whatever the case may be because outside of the right way there's only two ways i can think of you want something from it in terms of some materialistic return turn for giving your body up or what's the second one i was thinking i don't know it was right there too it's the second one damn boy i hate when i do that <laughs> you getting old yeah <laughs> i am getting old i'm not even gonna edit that part out it's the second one i can't even think of it right now though well, God, just, <laughs> well i just feel like if it were me out there in the world still dating single i just ask like how important is this having sex to you because i like you i like your conversation you know I, I mean if i like someone and i was dating like that it's like how important to you is it that we have sex and f based on the person's answer i can kind of know which way i want to go there because even if they lie it's gonna come out in the wash it's gonna come out later on and i'm not even making it like i'm gonna make them wait i just want to lay some layers not because i'm withholding sex from you i just know how quickly i can become unattractive because there's nothing else to you I prefer the, to lay the layers and let's have a better chance of having incredible sex than not. It's almost like making a dish and you know, I'm about to make some mac and cheese. You making some macaroni and cheese? Yeah. What kind of cheese you using? 
I don't even know if cheese is gonna be in it, but I'm, I'm gonna make me some. What? Do you have seasoned? I don't know. I'm just gonna get in there and see what's in the kitchen. Just go for it. No, you would go to the grocery store. You might Google some recipes. You have an idea, I want this kind of cheese. You know, you're gonna try to set yourself up to win. And that could be based on my wisdom and life experience now, because I was not thinking this way when I was younger. What I was thinking about when I was younger, I didn't know about the weight. I knew that whoever I was with, I wanted to be with them. You know. You just kind of knew like I wasn't out there like wild. The stuff I hear now, that's definitely not where I was, where it's like he can get it. If you give me the bag, like get this wet ass pussy. Well, I'm like, whoa, oh, this well, is I a... just remember the second one now, just based off what you said right now. Say it before you forget it. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> <laughs> the second one I had already stated earlier, that's why I was like, damn, what did it say? So it's either one or two things. Either one, you wanted the money or the materialistic things that he said he was going to give you or you get from doing it, depending on who you're dealing with. Or two, well, if I give it to him, maybe he'll stay. And there's a third one, too. Those are the two I saw. What's the third one? The third one is because you think that's just the next thing to be doing. I think that's oh, what's happening well, yeah. a lot. With, with this generation step one step two or step three yeah, we step did three. everything else yes yeah, well step three is just like because we could we just did i'm attracted to him he's attracted to me and we talked on the phone a couple of times we met up and you know well, wasn't nothing else to do no we were talking and then well, we just did it the bar is so low <laughs> like so let me get this straight y'all just had sex yep I go back to what I said before. You're not even aiming for great sex. That's what it should be. Maybe to aim for great sex. You don't set up. Well, I'm not going to say that for everybody. I don't set out. <laughs> I would think the majority to fail in life. You don't set out and be like, I want to be the brokest motherfucker in the room. You don't, you don't, <laughs> who says that? No, you want to have money. You want to have things. <laughs> I want to have the most that's funny. beat up fucking car they can have. Give me the most bullshit piece of shit car on the lot. Like what? I want to coming in the most raggediest clothes you can find nobody does that everybody wants to win in other areas of their life why not set out not the weight but the weight for great sex you want it to be so amazing that you're setting yourself up for it you'll be like man well we gonna make it great because i love everything else about him i really like this dude so and i know someone will say but the sex could still be whack but the foundation that's laid you can work at maybe making the sex better what made it whack for you now it was tailored to the individual he wasn't aggressive enough or she didn't do this or she just laid it. whatever that those are things you can work out but i say set yourself up for the wait for great sex you know not just sex because sex is happening all the time it's so easy you can exchange sex for things you can exchange sex the old-fashioned way for money it's an outright transaction going on where like you said straight prostitution now it's like under the false guise of i pay for it i take care of her you know i do these things for her and she gonna keep herself up this is a lifestyle for some women they stay looking good and they know if that one falls off, that one's coming and that one's coming and that one's coming. Like it's somebody waiting to come in there because of how she looks and the whole seduction and the thought of having sex with this particular woman. And they know that they can bank on that. So when one man is like, nope, it's about 10 other ones that's in line saying yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I believe that's another podcast altogether. Men give those types of women power. They would be powerless if men would not allow them to do what they do. Hmm. How are you going to come in saying you a trick? I'll buy you a bag. I'll do all that. Everything, anything you want. And it's like, she's telling you, you can get it as long as you keep me laced up. You can get it. Like, that's crazy. But somebody may say, there's nothing wrong with that. They know what it is. But, but that nah, I, I feel some type of way about nah, that. No, nah, so that's why I laugh. Because men and their egos, I've seen straight out rap beefs and regular individual beefs behind that shit. That whole, oh yeah, you can get it. I lace her, I spend his money. But what you fail to realize sometimes is a growing male that's immature in that area, you start to think it's somebody out there that got a larger bankroll than you so what happens when the dude that has the larger bankroll than you and the girl that you lacing up that you got next to you and it's so crazy because they can have them and then yeah they might be messing with somebody else the dude might be messing with somebody else too and cheating on the girl it's like well i lace you up don't i lace you up 
But if that chick chooses to deal with somebody else that got a bigger bankroll than you and you over here messing off, the dude end up getting butt hurt behind her going off and running to the other person. It's like, well, aside from you doing your shit because it's like I'm big dick Willie over here and I'm spending money on you so you ain't going nowhere and you doing what you want to do aside from you doing that if she did decide to walk out on you and go with somebody else that had a bigger bankroll than you you mad about it none of that shit really makes sense to me anyways when you really peel back all the layers when you take the music away from it how yeah it sound good on a beat whoop de whoop okay whatever but when you peel that back and when you sit down and you really think about it, it's kind of like read the fine print on paper. What sense does that really make to on both sides to do that shit? Because at the end of the day, that particular lifestyle runs its course. It runs its course. So it's like, yeah, you getting a sexual exchange, you getting what you want and opposite side, she's getting what she want. But both of y'all ass gonna get old at some point. So that's always been my sentiment too. It's not just about, oh, I'm over here being holier than now. It's just that I kind of think like, okay, at some point I'm going to want somebody to take care of me, vice versa. And nobody wants to really be alone. Secondly, we're not built to be alone, but that lifestyle right there is setting you up perfectly to be alone. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's different elements to it. I just thought I'd bring that element into it too, as well. It's uh, you look like a moth standing to the light. <laughs> it's, um, you just baffled. That's all. It looked like you came. I don't even want to say. Under, you I don't even want to say. It's, I don't even want to say it's interesting because it's just not. It's so basic. We just we get. It's just we make it crazy, and it's like this is stupid. So hopefully there was a takeaway from this. My take on the whole thing is like set yourself up for great sex. That's the only way that weight part can go in. Don't shortchange yourself. Please don't. And then somebody be like, I was looking at him. I knew the sex was going to be good. I heard he was breaking backs. So I, okay, fine. It's not for you. But define to the people what your definition of great sex is. I just thought about that too because somebody might be mm-hmm. thinking incredible yeah, define, sex. Yeah, define it because they may not even know what you mean by what well, you, you know think what? your definition is. I'm glad you said that. I'm not going to even define it because it would be different to or perception. Person. Perception for me, I want to be able to not only have a level of intimacy physically, I want to be able to explore the corridors of his mind and make a man think about me when I'm not even physically with him. That's the level of sex I like to have. I want to to touch who I'm with in such a way that it don't even have to be the physical part of sex. He can't see himself without me in that act or any other way because the connection is so strong. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So I I like to hit a person mentally, physically, and the emotion becomes a part of it anyway. All that kind of ties in. But the great sex where it's like we had sex for hours or we just kept going at it like animals. We drip and sweat on each other. That can happen with anybody. It's got to select a person. And it's like they got pills for that type of stuff now. That's why I said those things aren't hard. Uh, yeah exactly that's not <laughs> and the part i don't I don't like sharing <laughs> i just thought about the massages oh lord yeah so i'm not gonna touch on that i'm not i'm not gonna do it but there are levels of intimacy that people can pay for but i got a problem one i'm paying for it but hey somebody might say i don't mind because i know what i'm gonna get but somebody else can come and have that same experience for the same amount of money i don't like that so back to what great sex is for me i want to know that somebody else can't get what i got they don't have that type of connection with who i'm with now they might have had sex in a different way because we've been with other people but i i know that what an individual and i share it's on some next level type stuff and so for some people their definition of great sex may be something else. Just all I'm going to say is set yourself up for great sex. And my way of setting it up is whether you're waiting before you're dragging along, it's just like, don't hold out because you think it's going to keep them around. You feel like if you do it, then it's supposed to just bring you guys together or you're just doing it to do it or the other thing you alluded to Uh, i'm gonna get something in return go get your own shit yeah so (laughs) 
just set yourself up in a position where it's like, I mean, you both want it, but is this something where you'd want to be with that person after? I haven't even read the book, The Weight, but just from what I heard, Devon was even alluding to. He's not telling you, you have to wait. You have to, you got to have your own relationship with God is what he's alluding to in the book. And I mean, everybody is different, but I don't believe, like I said, you come in a room and be like, I want to be the brokest fucking person in the world for the rest of my life. Nobody start. I don't believe anybody has that frame of mind. So set yourself up to win in a capacity that, that you feel good about. And I don't know BS because even the ones exchanging it for the Birkin bag, somebody younger than you is coming. And if that person decides to stop shelling out the cash like that, I don't think you'll feel good about it. Now you got to go out there again and put yourself in a situation or on front street for somebody else to hopefully come and fill their shoes. I don't believe anybody really wants to keep doing that. That's got to be tiresome. Nobody wants to feel like them being with someone is contingent upon them putting out. I don't think anybody wants to feel that way. And I don't really think somebody wants to just keep doing it just because it's just at that point, there's no connection at all. It's empty. Yeah. I think uh, there was a porn star. I saw this was years ago. I was in college. She was a porn star, but only with men. She said, it's just really just like work. You know, she said, but she had a relationship with a woman. She loved her girlfriend, wife. They were in relationship. I don't remember if she said it was her girlfriend or her wife, but she was saying there's not any jealousy or anything like that because it's like work. She's just having sex with men. There's no feeling there. They're acting. Your body has a natural reaction. If you touch me long enough, the way she was talking about it was like, she really just went to work. And that's what I mean. That It just became that it became that low of a value. And that's not what it was meant to be. Or that's what, and even if you don't believe spiritually, I'm going to say it's more to it than that. It should be more to it than that for you. I said it about 30 times. Nobody wants to come and have anything mediocre in this world. They don't. <laughs> Imagine if racist starting. It was like, I want to be the last motherfucker in this. Oh, I'm going to run slow as fuck. I'm going to be a last place. I can't wait till I bring that eighth place ribbon on the wall. But I'm really trying to hit last. I'm really trying to make last. Damn. Moving too fast. I got to slow it down. I want to be the most mediocre motherfucker in this room. Like, who does that? Nobody. <laughs> I'm trying to get swept in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Man, I hope they get this champ, take this championship from us. I'm not even trying to go to the playoffs. But that's how I, my crazy examples. Somebody out there feels me, I'm sure, on this. It ain't, this ain't for everybody. The crazy corridors of my mind. <laughs> yeah. That's what I feel like when people... Get on this whole sex weight and this and that. Those are my thoughts on it. Those are your thoughts on it. And if you want to keep this conversation going and share your thoughts on it, you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggested topics, you can shoot us an email at realfitradio at gmail.com. Our podcast drops every Monday. Uh, you can catch a snippet on our Instagram at realfitradio. If you're not following us, you definitely should be. Lou's EP dropped Transcendence is out on all platforms it's fire go check that out too if you get an opportunity as always we hope this inspired impacted or empowered someone until next time